So, OFM, arguably the most on-trend industry of this past year. Now, a lot of people are trying, few are succeeding, some are having some really great results like ourselves, but most, the majority, are not, and they are falling short time and time again with this OFM space. They are hitting lots and lots of roadblocks with any road that they try, whether it be different marketing techniques, whether it be different chatting teams, whether it be recruiting models, or any simple strategy that they try and use for any part of their business. Now, we observe from surely the volume of agencies that we cross paths with, the typical issues that they are all facing and those that nail it, what they get right and the problems that they overcome. So in this video, we're gonna teach you exactly what we feel are the biggest problems and why most agencies are failing. Arguably the biggest mistake that I see new agencies making in the early stages is focusing too much on things like the website, the agency Instagram page, the contracts, all of the things that aren't actually gonna make you any money. If you are spending weeks and weeks building out a website, building out an Instagram page, all of the finer details, you're gonna waste time you haven't signed a model, you haven't made any money, you haven't sold any PPV, you haven't generated any traffic. You have to focus on the things that are actually going to bring in revenue for the business in the beginning to get things off the ground. After all, the number one rule in any business is money in. So faffing around with things that ultimately don't get you paid will only hold you back. Now we're not saying that an Instagram page or a contract isn't relevant. It's absolutely relevant and very, very important. In fact, in many cases, critical. However, it shouldn't be your first port of call. Why are you writing a contract with no model to send it to? Another big problem that we regularly see is a willingness, at least initially, to be anonymous. Now, we're not saying here that you've got to go out and start publishing YouTube content and be an influencer in the OnlyFans space. But what we are saying is that you should consider that models will want to sign with agencies that they feel they can trust, with agencies that they feel they understand and they actually know who this is and that it's not some ghost that's going to scam them. So having a public Instagram page, having a few posts, engaging with OnlyFans creators, following them so they follow you back, potentially engaging and building a friendship so that you like each other's posts, these sort of things go a long way because if a creator jumps to you, they click on your profile and say, oh, followed by 15 creators I know or oh, posts are like by my friend. It's going to be a much, much easier time because there's already that social proof and there's already that kind of referred, okay, this guy's okay. You know, this guy's worth responding to. This guy's worth giving a chance. So your recruitment's going to be better and it's going to be a much easier time for you growing your agency. Particularly when you're selling a service as well. You're not selling a product. You're not selling a software or a physical product. You're, you're selling a service and people buy into people. So if you're trying to avoid having that face-to-face -face interaction with someone, they're going to find it very, very difficult to trust you and your agency. And as Liam mentioned, you're going to have a real hard time with recruitment. You're going to have a real hard time developing a connection and building that trust over time. A key element to the OnlyFans business is, of course, traffic. If you're relying on your model, to bring in all of the traffic through her own social media, her own TikTok, her own Instagram, her own Twitter, whichever platform. That is a massive mistake and that's one of the things that I see agencies fail at time and time again. It's very, very important that as an agency, you're providing the service. You should be bringing in as much traffic, if not more traffic, than the model herself. The means that you do this with is up to you as an agency, whether it's regular marketing, blackout marketing, paid promotion, it doesn't matter. But relying on the model for traffic is a surefire way to fail as an agency. For you to maximize the revenue that your business is generating, you need the traffic to come in. And relying on someone else, a model, a creator that you've signed, to bring that traffic to you is not the best way to run your business. Remember, you are not employed. This is your business. So you cannot rely on somebody else to bring your paycheck to you. And in this case, traffic and therefore PPV sales are your business. This is what you must control. You should be in control of your own destiny as your own agency owner. So do not rely on somebody else to bring you traffic because it's your agency and it's your job. So you need to have at least 50% contribution towards what comes in so that you can take your contribution of what comes out. You could be amazing at recruiting new models into the agency. You could be amazing at forming company structure. You might know everything about taxes and all of the ins and outs of the business. But if you are not well equipped at bringing in new traffic to your creator's pages, there are no one for the chatters to talk to, there will be no PPV sales, and you're gonna be relying on whether your model has had a good day or a bad day, and whether she feels like making some TikToks to actually bring that traffic in. That is a weak position for you and your business to be in. Now another point that I can really relate to, having come from being a one-man band, is the problems associated with being a one-man band. 
Now, in this business, as you guys know, I have a business partner account. And I can see every time that we talk to somebody that doesn't have a business partner, the fact that every problem is on their head. They deal with the problems alone, likely in a bedroom, likely by themselves, likely stressed and overwhelmed by the problems that they face. But there is something about team that allows those problems to feel less of a concern because together we deal with them. You know, when a problem arrives on our desk here at TDM, there are countless people that want responsibility, want, I want to fix the problem, I want the solution. And if I wanted to, I could sit back, I could forget the problem even exists, and I could probably not have to stress. Meaning I can remain focused on the core business, I can remain focused on what brings cash into this business, and it allows me ultimately to operate with more efficiency. Being a one-man band, whether it be chatters, whether it be marketing team, whether it be a business partner, whether it be friends in the industry that you can associate with and you can be mentored by or you can exchange value with, whatever it may be, don't sit in your bedroom like a loser by yourself pretending that you can become this Rambo in the OF space. Connect with people. Find a business partner that you have great synergy with, preferably one that you haven't picked when you're hungry for a business partner and one that you've trusted for a while. Find creators that you get on with. Find team members that you can rely on. Remember that team is more important than being so OF. Another one that should be blindingly obvious but unfortunately isn't is just simply work ethic and discipline and just being willing to work harder than the next agency because you're you're not going to have any creator just turn up and go, yeah, so I'm looking for an OnlyFans agency. I presume you guys are the only ones that do this. They're going to know that there's other agencies out there. They're going to know that ultimately they have other options and you're competing for their business at the end of the day. That's how this works. So you've got to have a raging work ethic and you've got to be prepared to always do more than the next guy or the next agency because you can't always work smarter. Sometimes you've got to work harder. Sometimes you've got to do both. Now, it's recently been Christmas. Did you work Christmas Day? Because I know that I came into the office on Christmas evening and I remember Remember, this office was packed. There wasn't even a seat available at the core chatting table. That's how busy it is. We have a big table in the middle of the chatting office where a lot of the core people meet from their different chatting teams to discuss operations. I went to have a chat and the table was full on Christmas Day. There wasn't even a seat at the table. Try and just process that for a second. Bear in mind, this isn't an office where our chatters are forced in. They can work from home if they like on Christmas. But no, everybody is in here grafting their arse off on Christmas Day because that's that's what it's about for us. It goes back to the team point. Everybody in this business wants to turn up every day and get it done irrespective of the context. So you've got to work harder than the next agency if you want to even come close. And off the back of that, think a little bit about what I've just said there. All of our people have good people skills and turn up every day to be part of this team. And people skills goes further than you're in your own team. People skills is how you communicate with your creators, how you communicate with other people that you want to exchange value with, and essentially how you operate as a business businessman or woman because the way that you interact with people is how they judge whether or not they want to go into business with you okay and sales skills off the back of that correlate with it because for the most part some people especially creators in this case will buy into you rather than your pitch okay if you jump on the phone and you're arrogant you're not what they want to see but you've got a great sales pitch according to the piece of paper that you wrote you ain't going to get her business whereas if you jump on the phone and you haven't really got anything planned but she just feels safe she likes you you guys get on she feels some sort of synergy there even if you haven't really pitched a whole lot you're probably going to get the business because she likes you, she feels safe, she trusts you, she's willing to give you the chance. So for the most part, people skills go a lot further than in your own team. People skills is a big part of any business, especially this one when your entire way of generating new business is through people putting trust in you. The OnlyFans space is continually evolving. The social media platforms that we use to market are evolving. The creators and their branding is evolving and changing. The platform itself is evolving. You cannot be of the mindset of, this is what we do, I do things my way, this is the only way to do things, and be stuck in that thought process. You have to be able to adapt and improve as things change within the space. A fantastic practical example of this would be dating apps. So let's say, for example, we're driving traffic through Bumble, and overnight, it suddenly stops working. Well, are we gonna walk into the office and go, okay guys, that's it. You know, Bumble stopped. I guess that's the end of the agency. Good night. Or are we going to find a workaround and we're going to make it work? I guarantee you it's a second. And I'm sure you agree with me. So having a resistance to adaptation is going to hold you back. And it's one of the biggest problems that we see with agencies at the moment. And finally, another point to add on to that, that kind of aligns very well, is an expectation for things to be delivered, an over-expectation. In this case, it would be an expectation for a solution to appear. But actually, that's not the case. And an over-expectation in this industry is all too common because people watch videos from Dean or from myself or from Nate and they see fantastic results and they think, wow, these guys smash it. You know, I'm going to jump on and I'm going to smash it. But actually, have you spent the hundreds of thousands of hours that the three people I just mentioned have? 
No. So to expect that kind of result is, is unrealistic and you're going to need to either spend a lot of time or money to learn how to do it. So with that said, hopefully that was valuable for you and hopefully you've taken away a few things that at least you can consider when growing your agency. And now you understand what we see from you know the industry leaders that have been doing this for a very long time, the common problems that we see in the people that are trying to compete with us. It should give you an idea on what maybe to focus on and what to really consider avoiding. So hit us up on Telegram and we'll hear from you soon.